Yeah, I I wonder I wonder if we might actually get Michael's strategy on this show, mate. Would you want to uh, come on and co-host a, a chat with him? Can, can you what, imagine? Michael? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If, if, if I got him on the show, would you want to come on? There's no chance he'll get my... Well, you don't reckon? What, have you been speaking to him? Uh, I haven't, but um, I'm sure I'm sure at one day uh, he'll he'll want to speak to me. What? <laughs> what are you planning? Uh, well, I mean, I, um, I think he would just have lots of questions, um, and I think he's going to be so disillusioned with the BTC crowd for just telling him an absolute load of hogwash. You know, he's he's going to be on the warpath. And he's going to be looking for answers. He's going to be like, who the hell did this? And I'll be like, mate, come over here, I'll tell you. No, I'll tell you everything. <laughs> he's just a puppet. You think so? He must be. He's getting shelled by mainstream to fuck. There's no way. Uh, that, that doesn't just happen to anyone. You need to be part of the club, you know? Yeah, yeah, very true, actually. Um, yeah, you, you, you're probably right on that one. But, I mean, unless, I don't know, I mean, I think the uh, I think the powers that be are pretty ruthless. You know, they'll turn around and probably say to him, well, you know, we didn't, we didn't force you, you know. Uh, but yeah, they'll still, they still could you. chuck him under the bus, 100%. Yeah, they'll yeah, yeah. They'll doubt that it's going to be protected and they'll still chuck him under the bus. They will. If they need to. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. They'll say to him, look, it was... It was your choice. We, you know, um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, ru- it's ruthless, isn't it? Who knows how uh, how these scumbags operate? Like, yeah, jeepers. But well, um, that's the problem. If they're all scumbags, they think they can trust each other. But then, you know, you're trusting some scumbag. So. Yeah, I mean, I wonder how Pomp is going to uh, react. <laughs> you know. <sighs> because I, oh. I think I thought of these people will just stop creating content. There's no way they can still uh, maintain any credibility afterwards. You know, the really charismatic ones might be able to, but yeah, I mean, a lot it's... of these dry personalities, like <laughs> people just come after them. I think. I wonder. I mean, how how are the likes of uh, you know like Peter McCormack and Lynn Olden, you know, gonna gonna get around this? And also, I mean, even Michael Saylor, you know, literally just telling people well, to sell their houses just... and all that. <laughs> Sorry, mate. Say that again. Can you think of all the lawsuits Michael Saylor is gonna? Oh my God! Yeah. Yeah, jeepers. I mean, so so many people have pitched themselves as crypto experts um, over the years, and none of them, n- nobody is qualified. There are, because there's there's no official qualification in blockchain technology yet. Nobody understands it. This is why the the space only is Craig. Full. yeah exactly yeah only Craig <laughs> because he <laughs> he invented it. Yeah, it's it's nuts. You know, every every man and his dog has kind of like, you know, for the first time in their lives, like thrown their two cents into the ring and there's and there's been nobody to tell them that they're wrong. You know, and and if you might if you say to them, Oh well look, you know, you're wrong, they'll be like, Well look at the market cap. The market cap tell, tells you I'm right and look at the hash rate. The hash rate tells you I'm right as well. And it's you know <laughs> you can't argue with them. You're like, oh no. And then you know, you're trying to explain hash rate to somebody who hasn't really got a clue in the first place. It's just like this is going to be an absolute disaster, you know? Yeah. Oh my goodness. Yeah, I've just been um, I've just been looking at a bit of um, a bit of Bitcoin history actually. Um, I wish. Did you ever look at Satoshi's early emails? No. Hmm. Because um, I actually found out. I think he he said his With how good. Fit was it? Um, yeah, yeah, that was like the, the very fir- the very first um, correspondence he had. Actually, um, I think it was a guy called um, something McDonald who was the first person to ever respond to him. Thanks here. 
Did you know Australia's population was 21 million in 2008? <laughs> when Craig no, Wright made the white paper. Was it? No way. Yeah. No way. And his dad's birthday is October 31st. Uh, well, yeah, I, I had uh, I had heard that, um, you know. But as, um, what's name? as JP Morgan said, um, every man has two reasons for doing things. Um, the reason that they tell everybody, and then the real reason <laughs> for uh, for doing it. Oh, here we go. Nakamoto Institute emails. Uh, so let's see. Oh, here we go. Right. So the very very first person uh, individual to ever communicate with Craig, as in Satoshi Nakamoto, was a chap called James A. Donald. He seems to have been the first person that responded to the um, to the email that Craig booked out uh, with a link to uh, bitcoin.org a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system um, yeah fascinating stuff fascinating stuff it's a there's a, there's loads of stuff in Bitcoin history that kicks off in January uh, when the when the network starts um, but I'm struggling to find content for uh, the rest of December. <laughs> so I'm gonna be uh, I'm gonna be scraping the bottom of the barrel on that one, unless you want to uh, you want to help me uh, fill in some blanks. That would be uh, that'd be great. Mm. <laughs> well, we about the uh, what about the uh, five that bot I O? Uh, sorry, mate. Say that again. Your signal was breaking up. What What do you think about the five that bot I O? Oh, um, was that is that the marketplace with, on on BSV? Yeah. Ah, oh, let's have a quick look at that while we're here. Uh, your your signal seems to be dropping in and out, mate. Oh. Um. Can what, you hear me now? Uh, yeah, yeah, that's better. What was the website again? It's it's down right now. Oh. Um, yeah, so they had so many new users join that uh, they're not able to handle it. Wow! Uh, and can you um, can you say the name of the website again, just so people can listen? And I'll type it. Biosat. Biosat. Holy crap! So do you know how? Do you know how? Have, have you got a clue about how many users they had? Uh, there's about three hundred and fifty people in the Telegram. Ah. Oh. So not many, but not the not the system. Right here, yeah, it looks. But they say they're grateful because it's better to run into these problems now than during the bull run. Got you. It'd be um, a down when everyone's trying to get in. And so they're they're just selling what JPEGs again, NFTs on on Fiverr. Exactly. Oh my god. And, BSV20 tokens. So there's two types of tokens on BSV. One is a BSV20, um, which I can't remember how you mint it. And then there's the lock to mint, LTM20, which you, you need to lock your BSV to mint it, and then you get the BSV back later, like Hoddle Locker. Right, and on Hoddle Locker, do you actually get the BSV back, or do you... Um... Do you just get a market you, value or what? You lock it until a certain block, and then after that block, you can get the BSV back. Okay, and what's the uh, sure what's the point in that? Put it back in your account, or if you need to push the button to get it back. But I know they let you have it back. If uh, what they let you have it back at their discretion. <laughs> well, I think it's an automated system. I don't think anyone's actually uh, giving it back. Oh, so like a smart contract? Yeah. Ah. Oh. Yeah, I think I... Yeah, so Hoddle Locker's pretty cool. Firesat's pretty cool. Um, but yeah, it's... it's um, you were talking about security. You were saying... You were saying NFTs... Selling NFTs is okay? As long as there's a use case behind it? Well, so long... So, um, if you're selling art... You know, then, uh, then, you know, beauty is in the eye of the uh, in the eye of the beholder. If somebody wants to, you know, 
spend a hundred grand on a on a piece of artwork which is a JPEG token. That yeah, that, that's that's on them. You know, you can you can do that, uh, but what you can't do is just simply sell a token that is literally nothing but a token because it's yeah. it's not art. It's literally nothing because it doesn't. Um, you there's no way that anybody would buy something that they didn't think had some kind of value so they're going to assume that you're you're selling something of value you know um unless you <laughs> unless you unless you make it absolutely categorically clear look um i will sell this to you but this has got no value whatsoever so it's not a fair trade um and if somebody says yeah that's fine then yeah that that's on them <laughs> um but that's that's genuine securities fraud um because tokens are a f- um fungible so if you're selling a token there's no you can't differentiate one token to another and if you're selling it um you know, pff, there, there's nothing backing it was a, a non-fungible token is unique and therefore it can represent some kind of image you know um but if if people are still buying that on BSV, I've got to tell you, I'm I'm disappointed. You know, like oh, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> to be buying it on BSV right now when BSV has gone from like four hundred dollars and it's now down at like fifty dollars, and they <laughs> and they and they want to buy you know BS JPEGs with it, that that's on them. <laughs> yeah, you know, <laughs> um. But yeah, is your uh, is your uh, how's your how's your are you grasping the concept of the difference between a uh, a digital commodity and a security and an and an NFT? So if yeah, you uh, yeah, you can sell the you can you can create an offer and sell it via an NFT as long as you specifically uh, lay out what they're gonna get in return for buying the digital art. Or if they're going to receive nothing at all, it needs to clearly say that they're not going to receive anything at all. Oh yeah, so an art, yeah, you can you can claim that an art is an NFT because NFT is non fungible, meaning it's unique. So therefore, you have a unique bit of, uh, you know, a, a unique bit of data that you have decided to um, purchase from someone who was holding it. So that's effectively an individual trade. Whereas um, securities fraud um, has to, well, the the Howey test says that there has to be. Um, uh, let me think. The the transfer of money um, in a um, in a common enterprise. That's the difference. So um, an NFT is not a common enterprise uh, because it, because it's unique. Whereas if you were selling a token, because a token you can't differentiate a token from another token and and you're selling it to multiple people then that's a that's a common enterprise um so so even if this token has a use case it's still a it's still a securities offering oh yeah 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 um the the difference is whether or not it's an illegal security offering So you can you can you can oh, sell a offer. Uh, so an illegal security offering is uh, is where you're offering a token that literally doesn't represent anything of value. Whereas if you're if you're selling tokens that secure your entitlement to something, so it represents you know an asset of some sort, uh, you know gold or silver, um, and so long as you've registered that or or recorded that that's what you're doing. Um, then, then that's all right. If you can say, oh, I mean, you can even sell, for example, like um, a token that represents uh, membership. So if you can say, oh, look, you know, we're this if is. If you own a million tokens, you're now a member of this club. Uh, well, you could just say, look, you know, um, if you buy this, like it's like a subscription. Effectively, you can say, look, if you want to buy this token that I'm generating. Then you, then I'll give you access to my content. And so that's not the securities offering because there's a clear this is what you get. Uh, yeah, yeah. So it's 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 membership is what you're selling, and and that that's fine. 
you know. But what you can't do is just simply give somebody a token and and nothing, <laughs> you know, <laughs> just walk walk off into the sunset. You know, that's that's securities fraud because then the person will be like, well, I've just given you money. What have I given you money for? What does this token do? You know, I can't really see it, but it it says in my wallet I've got one. So what, you're what saying if the it? token does something, then that's okay. Because there's yeah. like, for example, a blockchain could have their 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 token, and you could say, what does this token do? And they could say, oh, well, if you stake it on our platform, you get this other token as passive income. Uh, well, the 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 difference there is that. If their platform is selling tokens and their platform is um, centrally controlled by them, then it doesn't actually need a um, it doesn't actually need a token, and that token should be a one-off sale rather than being sold on the open market. That that's the difference. So if you could, if you said to somebody, oh, if you if you buy this token and uh, it gives you access to to our platform and you can use it for X Y Z, then that's effectively what you're doing is you're purchasing a membership. But what you what you can't do is then float that token on a market uh, for it to generate demand because because it's because a membership is a one to one offer. It's a unique offer effectively like you know like like an like an nft like it wouldn't be fair if you bought um membership to your local gym you know and then (laughs) tried to sell that membership on the open market for more than they could actually buy it for anyway they could just simply go to the gym and buy a membership what's the point in buying a gym membership on an open market for 40 quid when you can just simply go straight to the gym and get a gym membership for 20 quid yeah that's that's the that's the main difference. Whereas with with BSV, you you purchase BSV to use the network because the network doesn't have any central point of authority or control. So therefore, you know, it's, it's the demand for the use of the network, which is meant to be representative um, in you know, economics, supply and demand. So it's it's the utility of BSV that the powers that be are trying to. Um, disguise from everybody because they don't want people to know what it should be used for because once people do understand what it's used for and they understand how valuable it is it will go absolutely mental crazy so you're because saying, you're saying that whoever made this bsv platform has done it to distract from the actual use case of bsv uh which which bsv platform is that this firesat platform uh yeah i mean uh to me it just looks like they're scamming people out of their bsv <laughs> yeah you know but um but the thing is though they're selling um they're selling nfts on bsv as art so that's their you know if you if somebody wants to spend 30 bsv on i'm looking at one of these uh you know satoshi sparks fire sats official nft collection i mean pfft, you know that's that's Darwinian theory, mate. You know, <laughs> Darwinism at its finest. No, no, but those those uh, fire sparks have a use case. Oh yeah, what if what do they do? You're holding one of them. You get paid fire points as passive passive income. And who uh, who generates those fire points? <laughs> Whoever's behind the platform. Uh, yeah, so 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 that they're gonna have to be careful with those fire points um, because they so they can give those fire points away and say, oh, you know, congratulations, you've got you've got fire points. But what they can't do is start selling those fire points. Okay, well, that's what they would probably be hoping for is exchange listings, no? Uh probably yeah uh, and that's where that that's that's when they that is that's when it becomes securities fraud yeah but if the exchanges are complicit and there's so many people 
complicit, then it's hard to hold everybody accountable. Uh, it is gonna, yeah, it is gonna be hard to hold everybody accountable. Um, people are just simply gonna have to take the the loss on the chin because you know they've been scammed effectively. <clears throat> um, but the thing is, though, um, it's basically gonna be the the creator of the the fire sat tokens who are ultimately ultimately going to be held accountable because they're the ones who are creating the tokens from nothing. Yeah. What if it's an anonymous creator? Uh, well, if it's on the blockchain, you can still chase it to the wallet that it was created from and there's going to be a digital signature attached to the uh, creation of the tokens. So you'll be able to track him down eventually. Yeah. But yeah, it's it's ama- it's amazing how complex um, this. <laughs> it's amazing how complex the situation is. Um, when I'm well, when yeah, I'm our regulators this. meant to even stay on top of this when you know anyone can go to this website and mint ten BSV tokens in the next hour. How are you meant to stay on top of it when we could make a billion BSV tokens in the next year? Uh, yeah, well, I mean, the, the, again, the regulators would probably only step in after somebody would somebody had complained because they felt that they got scammed. Uh, yeah, so it, it would be somebody reporting them, you know, because they're just like, yeah. hold on a minute, I, I bought this and it looks like I've got absolutely nothing for it and they've done a runner with my money. I think I've been scammed. Uh, that That's when the regulator would uh, would step in. So what, what scammers try to do is... Um, try and scam people uh you know as much as they can as fast as they can before the regulators get involved <laughs> then they can dip out with them well then, yeah they can try and run forever as uh csw said